Welcome, Ben Mama. When it came to deciding which console I would cover next in my greatest of all time series, it struck me that we haven't looked at an Atari system for a while, and then my eyes were drawn to the often ignored Atari 5200. I've given it plenty of love on the channel before, I've linked those videos in the description for those interested, but I haven't done a video on it for a long time, and not one like this either. I know the 5200 isn't the most popular system, and it never being released in Europe didn't help, but I'm still surprised at the initial lack of enthusiasm for the 5200 polls. For the first few days I got very few votes at all, so few in fact that I considered cancelling this video and doing something else instead, but then all of a sudden the votes started flying in and I ended up with hundreds of them. As with previous Greatest of All Time videos, I put the big question to the members of several large retro gaming groups on Facebook, including the hugely popular and very lively Retro Gaming Hysteria, link in the description for those who want to join, as well as my own loyal subscribers, asking them to name their top 5 and the reasons why. Following the same rules as other videos, I awarded 5 points to your first choice, 4 points to second and so on and so forth. I then counted up those votes to decide the final rankings, and in the case of games having the same number of points, I then went to the number of votes awarded, followed by the number of first place votes to decide the final placing. However, I didn't need to use these tiebreakers much until I reached the wider top 40, which as always will be available as a Patreon exclusive video at the start of next month. Now in terms of any interesting observations I made during the voting process, the biggest thing that stood out was the huge amount of votes for arcade conversions, which don't usually do that well in these polls for some reason, although this probably shouldn't come as too much of a surprise given the 5200 was very much marketed as an arcade machine in the home. What is surprising about this though is that the sheer number of votes for coin-op conversions meant that the many great 5200 titles by Activision were largely ignored, which really did surprise me. But I don't want to give away too many spoilers in this intro, and there's not much else worth talking about. So without further ado, it's time to get on with the show as I proudly present the 20 greatest Atari 5200 games of all time. This is an arcade game. This is the new Atari Super System. Arcade Atari Super System. You may like the Super System better. It has some of the best arcade and sports games, and plays every Atari cartridge. It even does something no arcade game can. Telephone! It's Judy! It lets you freeze the action. Hello, Judy. The new 5200 Super System. Barker Brothers were a big supporter of the 5200 and released some absolutely cracking games for the so-called Super System. This port of the Konami arcade game was undoubtedly one of the best and Frogger is still a game I love to play in the present day. One of my favourite arcade games from the so-called Golden Age, I've always felt that Namco's Dig Dug is criminally underrated, and so it's great to see the awesome Atari 5200 port make the top 20. Now where did I leave my massive air pump? In a list dominated by arcade conversions, it was great to see Countermeasure make the list. It's not only the 5200's best exclusive, it's also a game that makes great use of the much maligned analogue sticks with some really innovative controls. As the 5200's original pack-in, it's not really a surprise to see Super Breakout make the list. It's a great conversion of the classic Atari arcade game, with loads of options that includes modes supporting up to four players simultaneously.
It seems that when it comes to the 5200 you all prefer Galaxian over Space Invaders, which came as quite a surprise to me. In fact, the latter of those didn't even make this list, leaving this port of the Namco Coin-Op Classic to reign supreme. One of only a few 5200 games to be released by Trammel Era Atari, we should all be pleased that Gremlins made it out the door at all, because this is a highly original and thoroughly enjoyable game that recreates all the fun of the original film. Believe it or not, this was the only Activision game to make the top 20, one of only a few 5200 games by the company not to be a port from the Atari 2600. Dreadnought Factor can best be described as a cross between Star Raiders and Xevious. I think it's fair to say that the 5200 port of the original Pac-Man was pretty good, certainly a lot better than the 2600 version, but this conversion of the sequel is even better still. Programmed by creators of the game GCC, 5200 was Pac-Man is nigh on arcade perfect. Unlike the rival ColecoVision, the poor old 5200 wasn't blessed when it came to racing games, but it did have an outstanding port of pole position, widely regarded as the best racer of its time, and the one that all future games would be judged against. Another amazing arcade port, the 5200 version of Defender manages to capture all the action of the original coin-op, doing Eugene Jarvis's genius proud. There's also an equally excellent port of the sequel, Stargate, that can be found in prototype form too. Another highly influential game that originated on the Atari 8-bit, many people cite Montezuma's Revenge as being the earliest example of what we now call the Metroidvania genre. Even to this day, people are still making new hacks and updates to the game to add more levels and new challenges. Alongside Ballblazer, Rescue on Fractalus was the other technical marvel from Lucasfilm on the Atari 5200, and wowed gamers with its unique, for the time anyway, fractal-based graphics engine. It's probably the most technically impressive game on the system, in fact. Whilst there were many different conversions and clones of Atari's hugely successful Missile Command arcade game back in the early 80s, it was this amazing 5200 version that took the spoils thanks to its arcade authentic trackball control option.
Described by many of you as the best multiplayer game on the 5200, Joust is a superb conversion of the hit Williams coin-op that is actually credited as the very first arcade game to offer up cooperative play mechanics. A pretty big deal at the time. I've always been a huge fan of Kicks, so it was great to see this unique strategy game placed so highly on this list. There's no doubting that the 5200 got the best conversion of the classic tie to arcade game back in the day, and it still holds up really well now. When I ran the Atari 8-bit poll, Star Raiders took first place by some considerable margin, but it didn't manage to repeat that feat here. However, fifth place is no slight, and it's almost impossible to overstate how influential this title was on the many space games that came after. Robotron 2084 was seen as an impossible game to convert home systems at the time due to the twin sticks and number of sprites on screen, but the 5200 did an amazing job coming with a special holder for the two sticks and filling that screen with enemies too. The only home port of the rather obscure title arcade game, don't let its unknown status fool you, as Space Dungeon is undoubtedly one of the best games on the Super System, and also one of the few games to make use of the twin stick control option. Replacing Super Breakout as the 5200's pack-in game, Pac-Man is a huge upgrade on the widely criticised Atari 2600 port of the hugely popular Namco arcade game that persuaded many people to make the upgrade to the 5200 back in the day. <laughs> And our winner, by just 5 points, is Atari's superb conversion of their own arcade game that wins out for making use of the huge but amazingly awesome trackball controller, making it a truly authentic home recreation of the all-time classic. Super System. 2600 games, the adapter plays them all. The Atari 5200 Super System. Its only competition is you. And that rounds out my look at the 20 greatest Atari 5200 games of all time. For which games were you most surprised not to see make the final list, or are there any games that you don't think were worthy of inclusion on this countdown? We always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comment section. 
Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons and YouTube backers for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following people in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Paul Daniel, Mins, Dos Gaming Man, Luke MC, Carl Olsen, Seth Robinson, Frosty, Mark Strickland, Klimatorn, Trogdor the Burninator, Daniel Skronsky, Ben P. Stein, Tabby Kitsune, David Maddox, Your Eyes Are Bleeding, Joe Kassara, Classic Gamer 74, Bernard Santu, Peter Grantham, Noah Man, Josh Hartman, Martin Wiggins and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to host extra content including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.